So you all talked out? Not yet. Hopefully. <laughs> Wanted to you, you covered a lot of stuff last night about kind of the character and your, your mindset going into this. I wanted yeah. to ask you about the some of the physicality of the character, particularly like the handling of guns and things like that and how much training did you get much training time to do that or, or, or even like the fighting choreography and whatnot? Like how much went into that? Yeah, I mean that was a big part of the of the process. And we, we made sure that we had uh, you know as much time as we could. It's an independent film, you know. I think Henry Cavill did six months for Superman. Uh, we had about six weeks. Um, but um, you can get a lot done in that time. And, and I worked very, very hard. And, uh, you know, there was a big nutritional shift for me, um, just eating a lot of protein every two hours, uh, which got quite boring after a while. But um, but also, you know, hitting the gym hard with a, with a guy who was pushing me through pain barriers I didn't even know existed. Uh, and then in the afternoon, the martial arts, which... Uh, I found particularly the, the discipline required for that kind of stuff. Um, it's almost like a, a form of choreography, you know, it's, it's a form of dance, really. Um, and, uh, you know, very, very uh, good for the for the psychology of the character as much as the, the physicality and the, and the aesthetic. Um, and, yeah, at lunchtime we'd go down the gun range and, you know, uh, stand alongside members of the public firing off their weapons down by LAX. And, uh, yeah, and then we went out into the desert and got on with it. So... Um, it was, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of very unfamiliar stuff for me in this, but uh, but really fascinating getting my head around all that. Did you, did you learn a little bit about yourself, like, when you started using guns? Because people don't realize, like, when you see it in movies, everybody sees people using guns in movies, but when you fire a real gun, I mean, there's such a, a power that comes with that, and it really kind of teaches you about how you personally can handle that. Did you learn anything? Like yeah, and I mean, even firing something like, you know, obviously you have these, these blanks, so they have sort of quarter rounds, half rounds, right. depending on what you know, the look uh, that they want to get. And sometimes it's a full round, which yeah. is has pretty much the same kickback as a, as a real, you know, uh, live round would. And uh, that in itself was, you know, it was quite a shock to me at first. And yeah, you have to, you know, for the sake of the camera, get over that kind of... You know, kind of, you know, like you know, um, the very uh, British response to gun gun, um, and and you know, try and try and keep your cool. Um, so you know, that that's as much part of the practice as, as actually handling the thing. And um, you know, try, you know, as an actor, you always, especially if you're taking on a role like this, you want to you know look and feel uh, as authentic as you can. I mean, you know, in a, in, a, in that short time, I know that's you know not always possible, but um, you know, we had a we had a few good guys looking in on, on things, you know, physically, how we hold the weapons and, you know, how you load them and, you know, really trying to, um, you know, I, I would love somebody who had a military background to watch this and, and think that it wasn't too bad, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I want to say that, uh, I'm not going to invite you into my house as a guest. Uh, after I'm sorry about that. Too, too, much, uh, too much money for my taste. But uh, my roommate watched it with me last night. He brought up a really funny question I want to ask you. So he, he said, I wonder if, like, you know, since he did a lot of, like, killing and, like, fighting in that movie, if you had any nightmares while sleeping. That is an interesting question. I can't remember. If, if it messed um, with your psyche at all. I think it, you know, uh, it's certainly, um, you know, that kind of physical uh, preparation, it has a kind of metabolic effect on you. I did feel very different, um, particularly for the duration of the shooting. I think that may have just been all the meat, apart from anything else. <laughs> um, but, uh, I don't know about nightmares, really. No, I think, um, you know, I have two kids, and so, you know, you step in the door, it's their world, and uh, you very quickly shrug off uh, something as, as weird as David. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> it just left me. No. Um, <laughs> so, so a lot of people are, are praising your performance in this film. And, okay. And it was fantastic. Thank you. Um, they're saying things like you could be the next James Bond. I mean, is that really daunting? And and would you want to do a lot of action films like that? Is that something? I certainly want to do more more action. Uh, I really like the action comedy side of the guess, which I, I was able to explore a little bit more in Night at the Museum. I know that sounds an odd <laughs> a segue, but it, I mean it is an odd segue career wise anyway. Um, but the action <laughs> comedy element, uh, you know, I, I I heard Simon talking about this briefly at the end there. But you know, action sequences that have some character to them. Is something I've always really enjoyed. You know, I think uh, we've grown very used to seeing action sequences that are, have big budgets and lots of equipment and things blowing up and things. But actually, this sort of um, to have a nod and a wink in the middle of all that, which actually is, you know, in the tradition of Bond, you know, that, that is very Bond to have a little one liner thrown in in the midst of this insane action sequence or just a little raise of an eyebrow here. Um, that's the kind of stuff I've always liked. And, you know, you see that sort of. Uh, 
albeit not that human in David's case, but that sort of a little flash of, of character uh, that comes across in the middle of an action sequence is something I really, I, I really dug about this movie, you know. I mean, you, you I read the Entertainment Weekly article on you. Oh, gosh. Uh, that what just did came that out. say? <laughs> <laughs> it's a two-page spread. It was nice. Great. Um, <laughs> uh, you really want to stay away from anything, you know, resembling Downton right now. You kind of want to distance yourself from that. I wouldn't say that, that I would want to stay away from anything resembling Downton. Um, I'm certainly not going to go back on that show. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, I'm of sorry. course. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think that's really possible. But um, if, like, a really good English drama, period drama came up, which of you course. You know, we're looking very much at the moment at, uh, at different challenges and, and uh, you know, it's funny the things that leap out of a script that make you go, I want to do this. Um, and sometimes that, that's the wrong reason and you do it and you go, why did I do this? <laughs> um, with the guest, something leapt out of the page that uh, that made me want to try this um, this kind of genre. And it wasn't, you know, it was the fact that it was a number of different genres that really appealed to me as well. The sense of humor yes. um, really leapt out. And I, and I think I hadn't had a chance to do anything as darkly funny as that for a while. And I sort of started out doing comedy. I did a lot of students stand up and stuff like that. Um, did a couple of Shakespearean plays that led to my being employed initially as an actor and you sort of follow that path for a bit. Um, then Downton came along, things shift. And I think similarly for Adam and Simon with your next, like that, that gave us both of us a, a platform from which to go, hmm, okay, we could maybe do something that we want to do now, you know, that we actually, uh, you know, it's more in line with our own tastes perhaps or, um, you know, just try something new and a little bit outside of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And so they were stepping out of the, the horror classroom. I was coming from, you know, costume drama 101 and yeah. sort of met them in the school corridor really. Uh, and, and, you know, it was a very exciting meeting of minds. Um, you know, Adam grows up in Alabama. I grew up in Britain and we, you know, we meet in the middle of the desert and realize that we both love big trouble in little China. <laughs> um, that, that for me is a really cool thing. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the rest is, is in the movie, I think. But going back to you talking about putting personality into the action sequence and stuff, one of the things that I loved was the fact that the character always seems so put out by having right. to do anything. It's an inconvenience. <laughs> Especially those, those, the, like, those the, bullet wounds the, are just, the like, just damn annoying. You know, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh. yeah. <laughs> was that something that you got to, to play with and create, or was that already on the page the way it was written? No, that was, that was something I guess we, you know, it, it, I mean, for me reading it, it was obvious, but I, I, I didn't. I didn't know this at the time, but Adam and Simon were very excited by the fact that I found this all so funny. And I think they'd spoken to some guys who took it a bit more seriously than I than I perhaps did. But then I, I don't take a lot of things that seriously, really. Um, you know, I'm serious about the work, and I and I love what I do, but I don't take myself too seriously as an actor. And I was I was up for kind of you know giving myself up to Adam and Simon and letting them kind of you know screw around with with this with this character. Um, but yeah, we we definitely wanted to. You know that was that was part of the cool of the character. Really, was that you know that nothing was really going to stop this guy. <laughs> right. Uh, and there's lots of different modes and forms that can take. So yeah, any bullet going through is just like God damn it, you know. And, and uh, <laughs> you know, it just that that to, that to me is kind of is in, inherently funny. Um, and yeah, it was definitely you know, it was part of the part of the fun of the fun of the game, really. Yeah. Well, since uh, people have said the words about you possibly being the new James Bond, can you indulge us and do Bond James Bond for us? <laughs> Just so we can hear how you do it. I need to rehearse for it. <laughs> we'll wait. <laughs> no, I think, um, you know, David and the guests could give him, give him a run for his money. Uh, and, uh, you know... Well, I, I want to ask you something. I asked Daniel Craig before he became James Bond. Oh, I, I met Daniel Craig when he did Layer Cake. Okay. Is it nerve-wracking to think that you know, playing a character like that and what the pressures and the things that come with that, is it something you would want to do? Is it something that you think you could see yourself doing and still be able to have a family life and have your own somewhat anonymity? Because I think he, he kind of gave a lot of that up. Did you really he, ask him all these questions? I did ask wow. him all questions. And, and what did he time, say? Time, <laughs> yeah, he's he like, no, me, I'd never do it. Yeah, it's exactly yeah, like, what he, right, right. Right. he said. He said, I did not want to do this because I would give up all my anonymity. And then like a week later, he got signed to be James Bond. That's <laughs> hilarious. Well, I'm going to say exactly the same thing. Because <laughs> uh, then you'll be James Bond. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, yeah what Daniel Craig said. There you go. <laughs> did did well, you? Sorry, go No, ahead. no, I was just, uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you was like, in the scenes, like when the, the the, the, talking about the, kind of the comedy that comes out of this and like yeah. the scene like when they show you in the window yeah. you just have that dead eyed stare yeah. were there certain influences that you drew upon where like did you, were there other characters from films or things that maybe you wanted to say like 
that guy has exactly the same quality I want to bring to this character. Yeah, there were a few. I mean, for that specific scene, I'm not sure uh, exactly, but I know that um, obviously, you know, Kurt Russell is a big influence in terms of the fun that he's having up on screen in, in those movies. Yeah. Um, Uma Thurman and Kill Bill. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, I, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to cite Uma as a as an influence, <laughs> but uh, but uh, there she is. Um, but also, um, there's a, a great British film from the '60s called If. Dot 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 yeah, uh, yeah, by Lindsay yeah. Anderson, which is Malcolm McDowell's first movie, yeah. and I saw that movie way too young. Uh, I think it was like eleven or something. Um, which, if, when you see the movie, you'll realize perhaps why you shouldn't watch that. Um, and I was going to a school that was a little bit like the school in that movie, and yeah. uh, it, it put all sorts of terrible ideas in my head. Um, That's a cool flick, but it, it is an amazing, yeah. uh, amazing film, and um, you know, very interesting uh, film to come out of Britain, especially at that time. And uh, it's probably the you know the closest we we got at that time to a sort of you know a, a weird twisted action comedy um, but there's something about the kind of beautiful anarchy of that of that movie and particularly Malcolm McDowell's performance in that this sort of uh, it's just a graceful cool about it um, that really just sort of delighted in the in the weirdness of it um, that I found mesmerizing as a, as a young you know uh, actor growing up and um, and I guess there's, you know, there's always an element of that um, in in a few things I've done, but um, but particularly in this, I was able to sort of indulge that a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But there's a, there's a number of, uh, you know, for for all of us, really, a number of influences that fed into this. Um, Adam made me go and sit down and watch Terminators One and Two back to back, which I'd never done. I'd, I'd seen them both, but never back to back, which is an experience I uh, recommend highly. Uh, so yeah. that yeah, that had an influence too, I guess. Cool. Do you have any uh, upcoming projects you want to talk about? Uh, I, I guess, yeah. Um, we've got, <laughs> so, um, you're so great in this, I want to see more. <laughs> thanks, yeah. Um, uh, Walk Among the Tombstones is uh, mm. Scott Frank's oh, new yeah. movie with Liam Neeson. Um, that's coming out uh, on the 19th, which is a sort of hard-boiled, noirish thriller. Um, and then at Christmas we have Night in the Museum yeah. uh, playing Sir Lancelot, which is yeah. um, much sillier than, than the other two. But, yeah, like I said, it's sort of action comedy for me. Um, and an amazing, uh, amazing sort of world to step into that, and something that my kids will be able to see yeah, before so before something they your kids can before they see the guest. Maybe yeah, <laughs> although I'm sure they'll see it way too young. Yeah. <laughs> do yeah. you mind talking about working with Robin Williams? I do at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. For That's today. Totally Thank fun. you. <laughs> you, also, you also have a movie coming out. I think is it called The Ticket, or the, where you play a blind man that uh, yeah, a blind side. man who regains his sight. We yeah. literally just wrapped on that. Um, we shot that over the summer, and it was a, sounds like a really interesting concept. It is an amazing, amazing director as well, Ido Fluke, uh, yeah. who's uh, he's been living in Williamsburg for about eight years, with, uh, an Israeli director, his first English language feature, and it was you know, one of the most beautiful scripts I'd ever read. And uh, I met him about a year and a half ago, and we talked and talked and talked, and never quite dreamed it would it would come together, but we uh, we managed to you know. Uh, put it together this summer and um, yeah very very intense uh, experience and I look forward to seeing what comes of that yeah, yeah great yeah. fantastic very different again you know the question I was just a silly question did you have to practice in the mirror <laughs> practice in the mirror your brooding kind of stare like <laughs> only for 31 years oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Did you have to practice the ab shot? The ab shot. Well, that was, yeah, that was, yes. Uh, I wish I'd started earlier, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that like in the, in the like notes, it's like, okay, today is the ab shot day. Like today is the day. Yeah, they, they, the thankfully shot. they put it, they put it a little later in the shoot. <laughs> shoot you know, as much, much lead time as I, as I was allowed. But, That's um, like the dreaded day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, I mean, it's, I, I, I kind of loved it because in the context of the movie, it's a, it's a gag really. It's a, yeah. it's a funny beat. Um, to see a character like that objectified in a way that you know, eighties horror movies objectified. Yeah, it's girl very, it's very nice. And, and um, yeah. you know, and and so to see the you know, there is a there is a shift happening. I think, and it, and it, I like that it makes people laugh. You know. Yeah. So did you do yeah. some research on on how to be that southern mentality? You know, the yes ma'am, no ma'am, very calm and cool. And <laughs> it was interesting getting my head around the the accent. You know, and I've always enjoyed voice work and accents and that kind of thing but to, to get to work that into some on screen stuff has been has been great and it uh, it really uh, delighted me how much of that informed the character of the you know of, of the role um, you know that southern drawl that southern charm that, that gets him in the door that ingratiates him to most of the family most of the people in the in this world of the of the guest um, with the possible exception of Anna who just doesn't you know she's not buying it for a second you know and and, and she is really his toughest mission to, to complete, you know, to win her over and uh, and ultimately empower her, you know. Um, but uh, no, I, I loved how how that sort of southern the southern drawl sort of affected the uh, 
the mode of speech, the mode of thought, you know, and it's a different, it's just a different, uh, I wouldn't say a different speed of thought, because I don't want to suggest that, you know, for a minute that Southern people think in a different, but, but it is a different, um, it's a different way of going about your business, I guess. Um, just take the time, and, and David particularly, in a very, very military way, controls the flow of information to the people around him very, very well. So that, you know, enables him to keep that calm, I think. Well, it's kind of funny, the sequence, when I guess the first time you meet her, and you call her ma'am. Right. And then she's like, yes, ma'am. And she kind of almost, there's almost like an undertone mocking of like, you don't talk like that for real. Right, <laughs> you know, right. But, but some people do, yeah. you know, as I've discovered. Um, you know, again, as an Englishman, I'd be like, huh? But, you know, you, uh, you, you meet these people, and um, thank you. And I had... Uh, I had a great friend of mine who was from Kentucky, actually, he, he recorded the, I usually get people to record the Gettysburg Address, just so that I have all the sounds, the consonants and vowels and things, and um, so I had that, you know, to, to sort of play off and, and, and learn from a little bit. Um, and just, you know, it's, it's fascinating to me getting to know the United States a bit better and realizing what an absolutely enormous country this is. And the, the <laughs> real, like, I mean, I knew there was a spectrum, but, re- you know, just realizing quite how, how diverse and complex that is and what a weird place, you know, New Mexico is compared to New York, uh, you know, right. and yet you're, you're united, apparently, um, uh, which is, which is uh, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, well done. Uh, yeah. I think they have to play. Are we are we done? Yeah. Right. Cool. Very Thank nice you to see so you guys. Much. can't stop me. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.